And joining us live is Agogo Obo, who is a foreign affairs expert. Good evening, Mr. Obo. Good evening, Maka. Thank you for joining us. Um, while Burundi's Supreme much. Court has cleared the legal logjam asking the president-elect to be sworn in, will that alter the tenure of the new government? Well, the Constitutional Court was very clear, saying that um, it is when the uh, Everest Indashimi is sworn into office, it begins to count the seven-year tenure, which can only be um, extended for an extra term. So appears to have um, dealt with that part and then sort of um, uh, dealt with the explanation saying that um, the argument that um, Pascal Yambenda, who is the head of the National Assembly, uh, be sworn in as acting president doesn't arise since an election has already happened and a winner was declared and also confirmed by the Constitutional Court. So that sort of dealt with uh, the situation. A any other thing outside the Constitutional um, Log jam, which would have proved a, a difficult um, situation for uh, pre uh, President elect um, Evarista and Dashmiye, would have been um, Agata Wasa. Agata, Wa Agata Wasa is, um, was the guy who came in second place to um, Evarista. He was also the, the guy who came into, in second place to Pierre Nkuruziza in 2015. And, and both times when he lost at the polls, he always said, I'm going to go according to what the rule of law is, I'm not going to hit the streets in protest. Back when I was in Bujumbura in 2015, he made a surprise, um, he made a surprise entry into the parliament when uh, Pascal um, Nyabanda, who is the head of parliament, was being sworn into office. And I asked him that, isn't it strange that in an election you disputed and you got the entire world against uh, Pierre Nkuruziza, you're still coming to parliament to be part of that government? I told him, he said, look, I have to be in government to fight what is wrong and it appears that that's the approach is going to be taken so uh, every obstacle to uh, president elect uh, Evarist in the get into office uh, has been removed with the uh, uh, constitutional court's um, ruling right uh, Mr. Obo, you pretty much understand uh, what happens in the African space in terms of African leaders and leadership style. Now, shouldn't President Nkuruziza's death signal end to sit-tight leadership in Burundi and in Africa in general, though he had relinquished power after much uh, resistance from the people? Good question. Um, so if you, if you go through the entire continent, you find out that um, you have blocks of spaces where you have sit-tight um, leaders, people who've been there for multi-decades. So take, for example, Central Africa, where you have people like um, uh, Obiangumba Sogo Nguema, who's the president of Equatorial Guinea. He's been there uh, since um, 1979. You have someone like um, the president of Congo um, Republic, uh, Congo Brazzaville, which we all uh, re refer to. Uh, Dennis Sassou Nguesso. Nguesso was there in 79. He left in 92, came back in 99, and he's still there up till today. So uh, Paul B. and neighboring Cameroon has been there since 82. You could go on and on for Central Africa. But for East Africa, uh, where you have uh, Burundi, it's, um, it's a case of mixed fortune. So on the bordering uh, Burundi, you have um, uh, Rwanda. Uh, Paul Kagame has been there since 1999-2000. Um, so he's been there for nearly 20 years. So uh, neither here nor there. People will say that it's constitutionally altered um, his stay in office and prolonged his stay in office. And um, Rwanda's economic fortunes is by far better than what you have in neighboring Burundi. Next to uh, Burundi on the eastern flank, you have the Democratic Republic of Congo, which just got out of a, a big problem. And you have a, a new president there, uh, Felix, Felix uh, Shikisedi. Uh, Shikisedi is trying to undo all of the havoc that was wrought by the Kabilas and before Kabila, uh, Mobutu Seseko. The only shining light you have in the bordering um, uh, Burundi is probably Tanzania, where John Magufuli is taking over from... Um, who took over from um, uh, Jakaya Kikwete in Tanzania there. And they, they have sort of have had a peaceful transition. So whether it will, it will, it will send a message, um, it's neither here nor there. They sort of choose their destinies and their fortunes when they go into office. Uh, someone like um, Kuruziza came in as a hero, but along the way he decided to go for a third term and then made enemies, uh, not just with, uh, with neighboring countries, but across uh, the entire uh, Western Hemisphere. Mr. Hobo, let me ask you, finally, before I let you go, you're very conversant with what goes on in the African uh, space and, you know, in terms of president, uh, leaders in the past. What will be your advice or recommendation or agenda setting for the new president, Ndai Shimiye? Yeah, so Ndai Shimiye has, I, I was thinking about this, uh, his wish list, and he has a lot of work to do. So just like um, Adama Baru in Gambia, um, 
who was taken over from someone who um, the world loved to hate. Charismatic, colorful, uh, Yaya Jami left a lot of trouble for him. Same way um, Kuruziza um, has given and Dashmi plenty of work to do on the diplomatic front. So on the first hand, it will have to find a way um, to mend fences with the West. Uh, sanctions have uh, dealt heavy blows with the um, uh, with the economies of with the economy of Burundi. So maybe just like what happened in Zimbabwe, uh, if he begins to bend fences very quickly, uh, I know at some point he did have a tour around several areas in Burundi with, with top diplomats. Maybe those sanctions could be taken away. Maybe get the WHO back. Uh, talk to the ICC, even though I doubt it, because Burundi was one of the first countries pulled out of the ICC because of um, allegations of human rights abuses uh, between 2015 and 2017. So they'll have to deal with that on the first hand uh, with the international community. You'll have to mend fences with neighboring uh, Rwanda. Rwanda and Burundi are like um, um, lost brothers and sisters, uh, speak almost the same language, uh, Ki Rwanda and then um, Kirundi. Uh, Hutus and Tutsis, the same mix here and there, but uh, Paul Kagame and Ukuruziza never saw eye to eye. Uh, because of what happened during the Rwandan genocide and the aftermath where uh, Nkuzizu was accused of, um, you know, carrying out um, killings on the Rwandan front. So you'll have to deal with that also to uh, mend fences with um, uh, Rwanda. Also also on the agenda, uh, the maybe not possibly thousands of journalists who are in detention and many of them who are also missing. The space will have to be created in a way where journalists can practice in Burundi without the fear of being uh, picked up. And I mean, while I was in Burundi, I was detained for a number of days simply because um, they thought that um, I was there to do something which wasn't exactly what eventually I did get. But a journalist will have to find a space to operate, and that will send a signal to the rest of the world that uh, Burundi means business in terms of being transparent and accountable with how things are going. And then finally, there are over 400,000 um, 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 refugees outside um, uh, Burundi, some in uh, Tanzania, some in the DR Congo, some in Rwanda even, where he would have to find a way of getting them back in the country to help. I mean, he was asked a question during the campaign too, and he joked that um, the UNHCR was probably exaggerating this figure, saying that if you didn't have refugees in anywhere in the world, UNHCR wouldn't have any job to do. So uh, he'll have to get serious, get all those um, uh, Burundi refugees outside his country, back into the country, to help shore uh, the Burundi economy and also shore up um, governance in Burundi. Agogo Obo, foreign affairs expert, thank you so very much for bringing your expertise and insight to this very sensitive subject matter. And do keep safe out there. Thank you very much, Naka.